right, I think that should have done it. Normally you guys should be hearing me now, so give me a quick sound off if that works. Sorry for the technical issues, you know, obviously we don't stream very often, so expect some shenanigans every time we do. We figured out the technology for the most part, so I think we're ready to go. Um, to start stream off, just some technical stuff. I'm checking my audio at this time. So if you guys can just tell me whether my voice quality is good, whether my music uh, audio is good, I'm just gonna play a little track from the radio to see if it works. Alright, that seems to be working. To start off the stream guys, I am going to have a quick 5 minute chat with Alex Dunk, who is the creator of this show, and he is going to give us an introduction to what this show is all about. Uh, let's see if we can hit him up on Discord. Alex, can you hear me? Hello, I can hear you, yes. I all just right. have to mute the stream. Now, the, I have no guarantee that you are actually getting picked up by the stream as well, so they might see me talking to the void. Um, what I'm just going to do is um, put our Discord <laughs> so they see that we're actually in a conversation. Um, it's okay. going to take, um, take a few seconds for the stream to catch up to the part where we're actually calling. So yeah, we're going to see if you guys are hearing this. Okay, that sounds good. Are you guys hearing this and hearing Alex as well? Hello, everybody. Let's see if the chat. Uh... Yeah. Okay. They're getting. They're getting both of you. Excellent. So, Alex, this is uh, the day for you. Actually, this is what we've been working towards in the past um, two or three months when we started having the conversation. Like, how, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm really excited for everyone to hear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been, uh, I would say, working in secret on this project. Uh, I think we've been calling it Project Birthright until this part. For how long? Like, better part of two months, I would say? Maybe three? The full idea of the project has probably been about three, maybe even four months now. But we did spurt the idea off probably about a year ago. So yeah. this has been something that's been back and forth for a while, and we finally did it. And, yeah, we hope we you guys really like it. So... Uh... As Alex says here, there's, there's a lot of concepts that we have floating around to crew launch uh, that goes in terms of like, these are things that we would love to do that we think would be really cool on YouTube. Uh, when we started hearing the news of Hearts of Iron introducing radio channels, we thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if we had a radio show? And that's what me and uh, Alex were talking about. Now, um, originally my idea was just to have a single, single episode. 60 minutes just just something quick an introduction but uh, alex you just kind of took that idea and ran with it so where what are we working on right now so currently we have uh, this first episode that you're all gonna hear um mm -hmm. that's good that's all done you're gonna obviously you're gonna hear that and we currently have two other episodes in the pipeline with a hopes to do five for season mm -hmm. one uh and then hey if the series is really liked we do have ideas for uh extra episodes but uh, I think anything else on that we'll save for the Q&A yeah well we've optioned five episodes from you uh, you gave me you gave me a full essentially two seasons each of five episodes or so ten episodes in total let's see how the first five do I'm very excited about the plans you have so um, I suggest we leave it at that I'm gonna let the full radio program uh, run I'm going to mute myself and I will call you again at the end of the hour when we do a quick Q&A how does that sound to you Alex sounds great all right Alex, I will see you in one hour. See you in an hour. See you, man. All right, so that was Alex Dunk. He is an actor. He also has a YouTube channel called Midgeman. He does D&D. He does nerdy stuff, uh, gaming, uh, lots of cool content. Uh, he's very talented, so I'm really happy about having him as part of our team. He is one of the new showrunners, meaning guys who will independently do projects for us. And this is essentially what we are working towards with Kaiser Get Cinema being that we use the revenue of the web shop to create more Kaiser Right content, release it for free. Uh, you guys have already been seeing the music we've been posting. Uh, all of that is licensed music, some of it is originally made. And that is actually all I had to say. One last thing, we activated Super Chat for this particular stream, so if you guys want to send us a tip, feel free to do so. I think the button is on the bottom part of the live, uh, of the live chat box. Now I'm going to mute myself, I'm going to work on this World of Kaiser Canada artwork. 
I will not speak for the entire hour. I might uh, be active in live chat, but I won't interrupt the program, so I'll make sure you guys get the full audio uh, experience there. And that's about it. I am pressing the button and I'm going to start you guys off. Oh, just before we start, so in case people are wondering about how it looks uh, visually, this is uh, Royalist Radio, how it's gonna look on YouTube. We will release the link at the end of this hour. It's essentially a looping visual, so this is an audio only show. If you are on the move maybe, feel free to put your phone away and just get some earbuds in because you won't be needing uh, your screen for this one. Anyway, with no with further with no further ado, this is Royalist Radio, season one, episode one, Tyrants for the sake of tyrants. Welcome to Kaiser Cat Cinema. <laughs> As the sun sets once again across Lake Ontario, I remind you all to put up your blackout curtains and encourage you all to gather your families, turn up the radio, and enjoy yet another evening of programming from yours truly. I am Nicholas Faircrest, here to welcome you into an evening of politics, current affairs, and music, here on Royalist Radio. Mr. Richie Everett, who came down to the studio with his band and played that live for us just last week. First, on our show tonight, we have some news from the recently reformed American Union state. It has been little over three weeks since William Dudley Pelly and his silver shirt militia seized control following President Long's arrest on Saturday. But today, Congress, under pressure from the Silver Shirts, have enacted martial law once again, and are pushing for Pelly to be inaugurated as the second president of this Christian Commonwealth of America, before Long has even gone to trial. It has only been two months after the official end to hostilities and the end of the Civil War. Charles Lindbergh has denounced this action from the Silver Shirts, claiming it is a step towards a dictatorship. Lindbergh saying, It goes against the American values we fought for. Father Charles Coughlin, a native of Ontario, who has since moved to America, has 
shown his support for Pelly's actions, advocating on his radio show that Pelly should have been president in the first place. He's a good man with good, upstanding Christian values. He would not falter to greed and sway to Wall Street like Mr. Long. More on America after this. Sun describes this political catastrophe as the result of President Long's refusal to pass a ban on the sale of alcoholic beverages. The editor wrote in today's column how this may have precipitated a large-scale rejection of Huey Long by even our most conservative neighbours to the south. Pro-Long supporters are not backing down, however. Earlier today, reports of crowds some of whom were armed, have marched on the city centres across the nation, calling for Long's release. National Guard and Silver Shirt units have reportedly dismissed the protesters. One can only wonder how many protesters may have been shot. After all, the Union State Press are not allowed to report on such matters. The King held a speech yesterday on the matter of the Silver Shirts stating, the Entente stands for democracy, not a clean-cut left or right, just individual freedoms. Thus, the attempted takeover of the United States by the Silver Legion is no less a revolution than the one in the Union of Britain, nor the syndicalist threat it itself struggled to defeat in the Second Civil War. The Second American Civil War is still fresh in all of our minds. And now, is it possible that a third is on the horizon? This humble radio host remembers those long nights not two years ago where we could hear the roars of artillery and the rumbles of planes during the siege of Detroit, just across our border. Yet, brighter aspects of the war did exist. There were the additions to the Empire, the states that seceded the Union and sought the protection of our King to uphold their individual freedoms, our new allies in Alaska and New England. We all remember the photographs of cheering crowds of people escaping the bloodshed, but the question is asked, what now? The Civil War is over, and America has a government again. Many in New England are happy to be a part of the Empire, continuing the dream that was America. After all, 
Since its independence, New England's economy has boomed following the Canadian government's investment in new startup businesses, emboldening the entrepreneurial values of its citizens. According to the Boston Globe's chief editor, New England has every right to remain independent. There was no legal basis for a state to secede from the Union in the first place. Furthermore, the new Union has yet to publish its full Articles of Confederation. Samuel Warner wrote to us to share his view. Mr. Warner owns a small accountancy firm in Burlington, Vermont. He states in his letter to us, Getting our independence and joining the Entente's protection is the best thing that's happened to us. Before now, I always saw myself as a citizen of Vermont. But now, I see myself as a New Englander. President Baxter has done wonders for our nation, and could still do more. Since coming into power, President Percival P. Baxter has worked tirelessly to improve civil rights within New England. He is a stalwart opponent of the dangerous white nationalist faction, who thankfully are banned here in Canada. He has ordered several police crackdowns on suspected nationalist leaders and officials following attacks on African-American refugees crossing the border to escape the Civil War. White nationalist sentiment has been a growing problem within the state of New York since the Civil War, and the nationalists have reportedly been gathering arms. A white nationalist spokesman who contacted us here at the radio station, claims it is within their constitutional rights as Americans and New Englanders to bear arms. Louis Joseph Valentine, Commissioner of the New York City Police Department, has announced new city legislation in response to Baxter's crackdowns, offering to buy firearms from citizens of New York to both replenish police stocks and keep them out of the hands of the white nationalists. So far, the gun drive, as it has been colloquially called, has apparently been a success, with over 2,000 weapons being sold to the department. Yet, despite all unknowns and the changes put in motion by President Baxter, three days ago, a small minority of those wishing to rejoin the Union requested the New England government hold a national referendum. More surprisingly, is the fact that the New England government have agreed. Baxter responded to the referendum, saying, To deny anyone the chance to vote, well, that would make me a tyrant. The people of New England stood up against tyranny of all forms not too long ago in the failed United States. Yet, we've come so far on our own, and we can continue to strive forward. I have faith in the people of New England to make the right choice, the choice where we won't let tyrants get in our way. The vote in New England is set for next Wednesday, so, so if you're over the age of 21 and a citizen of the New English states, please make sure you're registered to vote. The fate of New England may fall to you. If you are not registered to vote, you will not be allowed to take part in this SNAP referendum. The Canadian government has issued the following statement. We stand by the people's vote of New England, and encourage the people of New England to exercise their democratic right. Alaskan officials are yet to comment on their stance on returning to the Union. I'm sure this won't be the last time we cover this story. Despite the horrors the American people went through on all sides, people still found time to make music, and here is one such example. There's a yellow rose in Texas that I am going to see. No other fellow knows her, no other only me. She cried so when I left her, it like to broke my heart. And if I ever find her, we never more will part. Hey! Hey! Next round's on me, boys. <laughs> She's the sweetest rose of color this soldier ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds, they sparkle like the dew. You may took 
the bells your dearest may sing of Rosalie But the yellow rose of Texas is the only girl for me Where the Rio Grande is flowing and the starry skies are bright She walks along the river in the quiet summer night She thinks if I remember when we parted long ago I promise to come back again and never leave her so sang so long ago we'll play the banjo gaily and we'll sing the song of yore and the yellow rose of texas shall be mine forevermore mine forevermore and now for some lighter news the circus has come to town a traveling circus group is setting up this week here in toronto Cirque Zvieta is a circus from the Russian Republic and will be in town for the coming week. The name means Circus of Light and boasts a spectacular show of music, dance, tricks and effects. The circus is particularly different to the local style, combining traditional circus skills with the operatic arts. The circus's leading attraction is its ballet troupe, who trained at the Bolshoi Ballet. Back in my early years, I had the utmost pleasure of seeing a performance of the Nutcracker at the Bolshoi Theatre, whilst on a tour of Moscow, back when I was but a mere writer for the Daily Mail. It was one of the only joys within a frankly mundane working holiday, interviewing the then-President Kerensky after the Kolchak Putsch. Two months later, I landed my first job at the BBC as a broadcaster. One year after that, I was booking passage to Canada on the first boat I could find. Sadly, those of you who are listening will not be able to share the joys of going to the Bolshoi Theatre, as it was one of the many cultural landmarks of Moscow that was destroyed by the Bolsheviks in their second uprising, which ultimately ended in failure. Coincidentally, one of the performers within this troupe is none other than the niece of the late Alexander Kerensky, Isabel Baranovskaya. We sent one of our technicians down to the Imperial Theatre, who are hosting the circus, to record some of the ballet movements. Here, exclusively, are excerpts from the Allegro and the Adagio movements of the performance.
Circus opens every day this week from 3 p.m., with the main performance starting at 5 p.m. Entry is 50 pence per person or 20 pence per child. The circus will close at 8 p.m. to abide by the royal curfew that has been in place since the reconquest was declared. On the topic, after the allotted break, we will have some exciting news from the War of Reconquest itself. On this day five years ago, we saw one of our darkest since 1925. The unveiling of the Totalist Charter and the dawning of the crimson shadow that has since plagued Europe. But, fear not, friends. Our solidarity and our loyalty to our king will allow this glorious empire to remain as the bulwark against the totalist threat. But things are looking up, and only up. Thanks to the Bill C-7 passing two years ago, we've managed to jumpstart our military's path to victory. The HMCS Reconquest, the first super-heavy battleship in the Royal Navy of its class, left the docks at Halifax last week and joins the fight in the Atlantic. Information on its exact specifications have been withheld by the government throughout its construction to protect it from totalist spies. What we do know is it boasts over 30 guns, primed and ready to bring the totalists to their knees. As always, you too can do your bit to go the extra mile for the Empire. Men of the Empire, do you have the will to do what is necessary? Will you defend our homes, our livelihoods? Enlistment offices are open till 8pm every day in all major metropolitan areas. Sign up. Do your part. Homeowners, invest into Empire Loans today. Support the rearmament of our fair Empire. And now for the first of our intervals this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this uninterrupted musical interlude.
welcome back to the second part of our show. As always, I am Nicholas Faircrest. Later on the show, we'll hear the story of one of our brave pilots in some news from the War of Reconquest. But first, a report from the war in mainland Europe. Metal European forces have been pushed back to new defensive positions along the Rhineland. Although the German forces held back the communal army at the Ludendorff line for a number of months, the, the armies of Flanders Wallonia and the Netherlands were overwhelmed this week by superior international forces spearheading weak points in their defence, causing a mass rout. Field Marshal August von Mackensen, who was in charge of the defence of the Ludendorff line, has begun a series of delaying actions to hold back the totalist tide, whilst the Northern Front reorganises from its route along the cologne mittelberg parallel. The government of Flanders Wallonia was evacuated and is now overseeing operations from their honorary consulate in Stuttgart. It is currently rumoured that in the ensuing panic of the rout, that the royal family of Flanders Wallonia also evacuated the capital of Brussels in search of sanctuary in Berlin. But there has been no report of them arriving safely. The king of Flanders Wallonia is Adelbert von Hollenzorin, the third son of German Kaiser Wilhelm II. There are whispers that the royal family's Sable FH-104 was shot down by a pilot of one of the armies of the Internationale. The Commune of France are claiming one of their pilots from the Army D The Commune of France are claiming one of their pilots from the People's Air Force, Guy Bottier, shot it down whilst flying a recon flight over Liège. But they aren't the only ones claiming the kill. The Union of Britain have claimed that a member of their female flying corps, Marion Wilberforce, shot down the royal plane from the seat of her Spitfire, somewhere over Antwerp. To make matters worse, the German government has not denounced either of its enemies' claims, leaving the rest of us fearing the worst for the royal family of Flanders Wallonia. Minister of Defence and Chief of the Federal Forces, Leon de Grel, has denied the claims that the royal family of Flanders Wallonia have fallen stating in a press conference from Stuttgart that the king and his family are remaining in hiding for their own protection. The people of Flanders and Wallonia should not fear. Only continue to fight the totalist threat. Do not listen to the totalist lies. We cannot know the true fate of the royals unless we hear from them themselves, or we get word from Germany. The effect of the missing royals are nonetheless being felt already. And to our benefit. Admiral William Klaus, formerly of the 2nd Flanders Wallonia fleet, has switched sides in support of the true king and valiant Entente General Albert, who has been training a free Belgian corps here in Canada. Like our own king, the former king of Belgium resides here in Canada, in exile awaiting the fateful day where he can reclaim his birthright in Europe and defeat the totalist threat. Belgium's situation is rather more complex than our own, however. post weltkrieg Belgium became the German puppet of Flanders Wallonia. Our king has promised Belgium's hero monarch that if he aids the Entente in the war against the totalist threat, that he will petition the German bloc for Albert's return to the throne. Many Belgian monarchists reacted badly to what they deemed reluctance and hypocrisy from the Commonwealth leadership. One outspoken member of the Belgian in exile community is General Victor van Strydendok de Berkel, who is renowned for leading the last cavalry charge by the Entente in the Weltkrieg. In an interview with the Toronto Star last month, Buckle describes the king's unwillingness to fight the Germans as proof of the king is hiding behind a totalist scapegoat for his own failures and his father's failures in the face of the Kaiser back in 1921. Buckle later retracted his absurd statement to the Star after pressure from both the Canadian government and King Albert of Belgium. 
In response, Prince Leopold, Albert's son, released a statement to the Star claiming, The free people of Belgium will stand with our Entente allies in wholehearted solidarity. The Belgian nation in exile has managed to raise one corps of troops to fight for the Entente thus far, numbering 55,000 men. Some of the free Belgian forces are veterans from the Great War, but many are volunteers from the large Belgian communities within Quebec, many of whom come from families who moved here following the peace of 1921. If you are a Belgian national residing within Canada and are of able body, Prince Leopold is calling for you to do your bit in reclaiming your birthright. The free Belgian forces are in the process of raising a new corps and need brave young men to do their bit. The Canadian government, in conjunction, have also formed three Belgian squadrons of the RAF. Speaking of the RAF, there is no more glorious and gentlemanly way to help the war effort than by joining an air crew. The Royal Air Force are the only branch of our brave armed forces that actively partake in air, land and sea combat. They are our first point of contact with the enemy and fight daily sorties with the totalist fiends, engaging their air force and navy over the Atlantic. Soon they will dominate the skies of the homeland itself. Will you be there? In just a moment, we will hear the story of one of our brave RAF pilots in this fresh report from the recent Battle of the Azores. But first, some music. landing the final coup de grace on the commune vessel, the Gascogne. But first, let us set the scene. As you're all probably well aware, the Azores have been home to the government in exile of our Portuguese allies since the Spanish invasion of Portugal last year. As a staunch ally of the Entente, Portugal was a strategically important nation, in our alliance chain. 
Canada and Free France alike, had units stationed there to support the Africa Front opened up by the Internationale's invasion of Tunis. Originally, the Kingdom of Portugal were not formally part of the Entente, remaining neutral in an attempt to keep Spain neutral. The King of Portugal, fearing international aggression and a Spanish invasion, did in fact loan many ports and military bases during this neutral phase. On the 12th of July, 1940, King Durante's fears were correct. CNT FAI forces crossed the Portuguese-Spanish border in Baja and pushed rapidly to the capital of Lisbon. The Portuguese army was soon overwhelmed, retreating to the north to fight a guerrilla campaign, whilst the government, navy and air force fled to the safety of the Azores. Since then, the combined navies of the International, forces from Spain, the Commune of France and the Union of Britain have been sieging the Azores relentlessly, including two failed landing attempts by the Union of Britain. The Commonwealth's second fleet was sent to break the siege. Now, to the battle. At 0600 on the 2nd of May, Task Force 3 of the Royal Navy, led by Admiral Dudley Pound, spots a large French force coming to reinforce the sieging Spanish Navy. Pound radios to Admiral Mountbatten, who is trailing with the carrier task force by about 300 nautical miles. Mountbatten scrambles his fighters in an attempt to gain early air superiority. One of those fighters was flown by our hero, Burling. At around 0745, the 22 planes launched from the decks of the Hermes and the Empress, grouped with Pound's task force. Pound's task force then engaged the French fleet. A bombardment of our brave ships began, squaring off to a superior in number but outdated commune force. At 0800 hours, Burling spots planes at his 5 o'clock. Spanish fighters dispatched from Spain's only aircraft carrier, the Libertad. They began engaging our brave fighters. Burling turned his former to face the oncoming planes, using the sun to mask his approach. A spiraling aerial display of bullets and maneuvers ensued. Burling managed to shoot down six Spanish fighters before his left wing took substantial damage and he was forced to return. On the way back, he took on another three fighters, defying all odds. Burling managed to pilot his fighter all the way back to the safety of the Hermes. Upon exiting his craft, a flight controller by the name of Sergeant Richards noticed Burling was bleeding from the bicep. Burling, despite much protest, was ordered to the sick bay. Apparently, a hail of Spanish bullets had breached the cockpit, and a round had penetrated the muscle in Burling's arm. Medic stressed the wound, and after much argument from Burling, he returned to the flight deck to try and get back into the air. Upon returning to the flight deck, Burling was informed his former was unable to fly. Frustrated, he demanded his CO let him back into the air some other way. There were no other former fighters available. But, due to sickness, the Hermes was down a few of its Albacore bomber pilots. Luckily, Burling originally trained as a bomber pilot before becoming the fighter ace he is today. Burling was attached to the 778th Naval Air Squadron and took to the skies once more. The counterattack had begun. The Spanish had all but fled from the battle, but the French Navy remained. A fierce bombardment leapt from the two French dreadnoughts and their 14-inch guns, as well as potent fire from the 15-inch guns of the Gasco, suppressing Pound's task force and landing hit after hit. The situation was looking dire. The 778th NAS leapt into action, diving into their first bombing run. First of all, targeting the Justice, one of the French dreadnoughts. 
the 778th released their torpedoes, but no luck. The Justice turned to starboard just in time to avoid the glancing blow. Seeing that their Spanish allies no longer had the air superiority, the French battleships began to retreat. The wounded ships from Pound's task force let off one final volley before doing the same. A shell from the HMCS Royal Oak landed a penetrating hit on the stern below the waterline of the Gascone, crippling its rudder and its ability to turn. The 778th were already returned to base after failing to land their strikes on the dreadnought. Burling's craft, however, did not manage to launch its torpedo due to a system failure. Burling thought to himself, if God is with us, he will help us win this war, and he will help me get this final shot. Burling broke formation in an attempt to try again. In a foolhardy act of courage, defying all orders, Burling began a steep dive to attack the wounded Gascon. As if an act of God had intersected with an act of fate in the weave of the universe, the torpedo released and propelled towards the limping French vessel. A direct hit. She was dead in the water. The madman, the kestrel of the Azores had succeeded where others had failed and made sure the French and the Spanish alike paid for attacking our ally in the Atlantic. Burling returned to the Hermes a hero, and will soon be returning to Canada a hero on a drive to sell war bonds. Appearance dates for Burling's bond drive will appear in next week's show. Well, that's about all we have time for on our show tonight. Before I leave you with some music, I would like to take a moment to remind us all that no other nation has the That's tenacity it, we, the, the people of the Commonwealth, have to fight for what is ours. Our freedoms, our homes, our families, our birthright. We will end the cycle of tyranny gripping Europe. The false freedoms of the totalists, the underhanded warmongering of the Kaiser. We will fight, and we will win. Good night all. Can I get a... And God save God the king. God save the king from you all. You guys enjoyed that that was kaiser Reich radio season one episode one four more episodes coming in this season god save the king Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I think I am back on right now. So that was Kaiserreich uh, season, Kaiserreich Radio season one, episode one, in full display for you guys. I am going to call Alex right now. We are going to do a little Q and A while he is talking to you. I am also going to uh, make the video public, the actual uh, radio video. Now I'm going to see. Does this work if I put some light music on the background? Give me a sound of uh, whether that audio is good. I put it at like 20%. Um, for the people asking about New England, that would be somewhere in the coming two or three weeks. Uh, you've already seen the illustration. The illustration is complete. We are currently waiting for a final voiceover. Uh, we're about 60% into the animation. It takes quite a while to create a, um, a world of guys who have videos, you guys know it. It's uh, quite a bit of work because there are a few people involved and many factors. Anyway, uh, Alex, by the time you hear this, I will be calling you on Discord. 
and we will do a small Q&A session. Mute you on the stream, give you two moments. Yeah, 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 you're gonna mute me, or it's gonna be a double, uh, double whammy. Yeah. All right, there we are. I'm, I'm all right. good now. How are you feeling? Uh, how are you feeling, oh, Alex? I, I, I was filled with pride seeing all of those God Save the Kings right at the end there. Oh, <laughs> just like... That was, uh, that was some intense God Save the King at the end. Yeah, and uh, I hope everyone watching uh, and listening uh, enjoyed the first episode. I. Uh, we've got... um... I thought it was really good. So I really like the uh, sort of the mix of music and roleplay video. I think it's just right in this one. Um, what we will also be doing, of course, as you mentioned uh, in the live chat, is we will be releasing that uh, separately afterwards. Yes. Now, do you want to come yes, on uh, webcam with us, or do you want to stay audio only? Oh, I can come on webcam. Let me just turn a light on. I'm gonna clear uh, out my screen. So. Uh... Yeah, no worries. Uh, let me know when you want me to turn on my webcam. Because yeah, I'm... just turn it off. I think people can see you. I think you said you were you've been uh, noting down the questions we will be answering. Yes, so it's uh, in the document I've yeah. shared with you. You still need to give me access to the document. Oh, I should have done it. Um, hold on, give me two moments. <laughs> While uh, Alex is working on getting us access to those questions, guys, I'm going to dive into my YouTube backend and I'm going to give you the link to the actual uh, world of, to the actual Kaiser Reich radio thing. Give me a minute and then you guys can share that link around. What's up, Alex? Looks like you're on stream. Hello. You. I'm going to max yes, screen I, I, you. I, th I think I can be seen now. All right. Okay. If, if no this worries. works, you should be max screen by now. And with a small little thanks, by the way, uh, Zarko for joining our Patreon program during the show. Also, thanks to everyone who's been super chatting. Uh, I sometimes hear a weird little sound and I'm not sure whether it's super chat or whether it's something else. In any case, uh, Alex, just give me five minutes while I put no this first episode public. There we go. Boom, it's out there. It's out in the wild. I'm... Oh, it's it's done. It's out there. It's it's lovely. It's uh, done. A full hour. You, want, this, you want the jacket? Someone in chat says they want the jacket. Well, they can get that from the website. If you go to kaisercatcinema.com and go to the merch store, you can actually buy this. This is the forest green color, uh, <laughs> which I really liked. And it's it, it oh, stayed very I, soft in the wash. There you are. I think I did something I shouldn't have done. Just a second. Are you guys still seeing the stream? Sorry, I'm messing around in my YouTube backend. It's uh, I haven't done this before while I was actually live. <laughs> so yeah, I hope I didn't. Oh no, no, the stream is stream is still up. Okay, um, we got that. Yeah, um, so you can get the, get get the just a tip. Get the creator uh, creator studio app from for your phone, and you can set things to go live from that. That's actually not a bad idea. I'm using OBS Studio right now. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it it's not perfect yeah. uh, especially like when we start try to start the stream i forgot that you have to go manually anyway we uh, have some questions from the fans so yes, i suggest we we, have uh, we got anywhere. uh living angry cheese asked us what is kaiser Reich radio and where can i get merch <laughs> um so kaiser Reich radio as i think we've stated is a new series of alternate history radio broadcasts and they're all set on the same day for season one anyway in the kaiser Reich universe season one is in 1941 and uh as for merch, I don't know. We'll have to have a we'll have to have a chat about that, Vincent. Uh, there might be something in the pipeline. We, um, yeah, I mean, I can I can definitely reveal that we are thinking about uh, doing some Nicholas Farquhar related merch. Nicholas Farquhar is a character you created that is a radio presenter in this particular radio show. Uh, I'm pretty excited about having that. Like, I would love to have um, different variations of promotional posters and sort of build a universe around that. Anyway, yes. Next question. How many episodes of Kaiser Reich Radio are you planning to release by Romero Garcia Jr.? Yes. I'm going so, to have a quick go here. You no, can do it. No, yeah, yeah, you can I will, I will keep talking. Um, <laughs> so there's currently five episodes planned um, surrounding Nicholas Faircrest anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a pipeline, and I, I think it was mentioned before the stream. I myself have um, planned out for a... Uh, two seasons so far like to give us a map of where we want to go mm -hmm. um and hopefully 
take us a little bit around the world is what I want to kind of do. Uh, so yeah, but that all depends obviously on people's support and continued yeah, yeah. enjoyment of the series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely um, we're committed for these first five episodes. Uh, beyond that, so that's going to be season one. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, we uh, we need to see like how, if this if this does well. I'm definitely excited about ordering more episodes. And I think, based on the viewership we've had during the stream, that I feel pretty good about what the, what the possibilities are for this new uh, format for us. Anyway, we are going to continue. Uh, Daring Dare asks, will there be any encoded messages in the broadcast meant for secret agents who have infiltrated enemy territory? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I can neither confirm or deny that, but the circus is in town. The circus is in town. The circus has come to town. What is your personal favorite faction out of the main tree by Henri Calderon? Uh, oh, okay, so I had to think about this because in all the games of Kaiserich that I've sat and played, I've never actually played one of the main factions. Uh, I've always played the Independents, but as a Brit, I'd have to say the Entente and the Union and um, the Commonwealth of Canada and the, the remaining burnt husk of a Commonwealth is like a, a, has a strong place in my heart. What about you, Vincent? What's your favourite Kaiserich? Um, um, I've always been particular to sort of the sort of the falling empires, especially in the Kaiserreich timeline, which means I'm particular to the uh, Ottoman Empire first. The I would say oh, Austria, nice. Austria Hungary as well. Um, I always feel like a united German confederation under uh, Blessed Karl is a great playthrough. <laughs> uh, now, yep. if you want to be edgy, you, I just go uh, UOB and conquer the world. <laughs> 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 Will Wilhelm II be the fifth DLC fighter in Smash Ultimate? <laughs> I wanted to include that question just because, uh, you know, um, well, according to Smash Bros, uh, everyone is here. So. I would say uh, Nintendo gives a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, great. I would love to see Wilhelm II as like a, a like a souped up yeah. Super Smash Bros. fighter. Are there plans to do short stories or even written works? Question by Vince Wise. Um, I think that's best uh, answered by you i know we want to do more stories being told through the auto audio um mm -hmm. uh sort of thing but i think you uh, th there might be room for written works and yeah, uh, short stories so uh what i can say is that right now i'm talking to uh you guys might remember some time back there was someone who made a um who actually wrote a book about the Union of Britain, a history book, which uh, was very cool. Put that on our Reddit a while back. Uh, I'm talking to that author right now. It's something we're interested in. Uh, we've got nothing in the pipeline, but there might be something. Like, I would love personally to have uh, books on the store, for example, and more long form content, like not just this radio show, but also yeah. like a full audio book. I think that will be really cool. I think um, some more audio content on this channel would be nice, and that's just also kind of based on my own consu uh, consuming habits is because I kind of like having things on the background while I'm doing other stuff and oh yeah I have a I have a I have a sneaky suspicion that a lot of our users are the same so we're, I think we're about to find that out anyway. yeah I, I I agree with that um, like I'd sit and listen to so much like if, if, if it's an information video I'll just sit there and listen I do a lot more listening on YouTube than I do watching these days mm. so uh, audio content is something that I'm really happy about and happy that we can bring this to the channel yeah properly all right how long did it take you to write all the lyrics so in sambora so i'm guessing by the lyrics uh you mean script uh because all the yeah the actual songs and the music was, yeah. yeah the music was licensed through epidemic sound and mm -hmm. uh some other places and uh, fantastic thank you for epidemic sound and all the all the composers that worked hard on their music yeah we're um, very happy about that uh they also did the uh, union union state team all the american teams we've yep. been uploading recently yep um but the script itself took me about 10 hours of solid work mm -hmm. uh making adjustments here and there and I actually am not a writer. Uh, I, I've always been, a, I've been the talker rather than the, the sit down and or, or the ideas guy where someone else sits and writes it for me. So mm -hmm. I found it really challenging. And um, so for the rest of the series coming up, we're going to be bringing in writers, one of which the writer for episode two, I know has been sitting in chat, mm -hmm. uh, it, but it's a user by the name of Commissar Roach. Oh yeah, Commissar uh, Roach, of course. I've seen he'll be writing, mm -hmm. he is writing the second episode, the project title of which we might release at the end of the day. We're not sure yet, but yeah. Uh, yeah so uh, we'll be bringing in writers for future episodes, but All it was right. hard work. 
All right, cool. So um, as people that uh, are on the Discord may have noticed there is more and more people appearing who suddenly have a crew tag who you've never seen before. That's obviously all part of um, sort of the projects we're doing in the back end. We've got, I would say, between two and five things we're working on that are unannounced that we just call them projects because there's always a space between the actual, uh, I would say, reveal of a project and where we're working on it, where we're still sort of trying to figure out like how is this gonna work exactly and like we don't feel confident about it right now but uh obviously i you might hear more about those beyond pdxcom because right now we're not doing a lot of new stuff we're just doing the world of kaiserreich where we're doing this radio um a lot of work is going to pdxcom yeah. beyond pdxcom i'm hoping to get more like new content on obviously alex you are part of a few of those projects um yeah. next question does this mean the American Union State winning is canon by Warren Lemkule? Okay, um, I saw this question come up by a couple yeah, of people. Yeah, we've seen um, a few variations of this. Anything that's in Radio Kaiserreich is not canon. The idea of Radio Kaiserreich is to explore the what-ifs within the Kaiserreich world, much as you guys yeah. do when you play the game, or when I play the game for that matter. It's um, That's why we're doing a different timeline with every episode, and we're... We're just playing with the idea and playing with the universe because we love the universe so much. Hope yep. that answers your question. Yeah, so um, that's actually generally I have to say about just guys who get cinema in general is we do not write guys write lore. Yeah. Like we, besides the the principle has always been that there is no guys write lore past 1936 or so everything. Uh, we, especially World of Guys Write series, which is the series that I'm running. Yes. Uh, we go back and forth a bit because it sometimes fits our narrative to be a bit later in the 1930s. We might, uh, I think World of Kaiser Rock Canada is sort of more in the 1940s area, but it's never canon because especially as we go forward with the World of Kaiser Reichs, you will see them suggesting scenarios that are in, incompatible with each other. Like one video might say um, after, after the, the Third International won the Second World Creek, while the video after that says uh, Lawrence, the Lawrence Coop succeeded. So there's definitely no no part there where we're saying this is the new canon. I think what's cool about Kaiserreich is that there we should never accept a canon past 1936. Like it's it's yeah. it's it's a butterfly effect. Like anything could happen. Everything that's possible in the game is also possible in our storylines. So we can essentially take the same year and make multiple shows set in that because it's a different timeline every time. Yeah. It's about and what I um on the lore itself, though, we do work very closely with the Kaiserreich guys to get it right. Anything that is pre-1936. I remember um, having my script, the first script, go back and forth. It's like, is this okay? Have I broken the rules yet? I'm, I'm sorry if I have. Uh, but yeah, so we, 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 we both like to change the law and go further with it. But uh, we, we, we try to keep ourselves regimented to what's already contained, that all the stuff that you can experience. Basically. Yeah. All right. Um... How long do one of these radio episodes take to produce, asks Daniel Knapp. Okay, um, if we include the writing, recording, editing... Yeah, I would say we include the whole thing. Yeah, uh, I think the first episode took me well over a day uh, mm. in terms of work. Um, probably longer if you can consider my thought processes and bits that I've scrapped mm. and didn't like and wanted to redo. Um, one of the things about uh, voice acting, because uh, for those of you who don't know, I didn't uh, for this piece. I I'm also playing Nicholas Faircrest, uh, and I will be in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but um, for voice acting, uh, if you get something wrong, you have to redo the take, uh, and that can take some time. Because especially with it being my own work, I'm a bit more of a perfectionist as I would be. Oh, that's uh, no, I'm not going to continue that sentence. That might sell myself badly. Uh, <laughs> but no, it, it, so there's yeah, a lot of uh, back and forth and trying to be, mm. trying to trying to get it right. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it took it took me a long time, uh, especially uh, as an hour's worth of content. Yeah. Um, well, there's also my part. So after you deliver, after Alex delivered the audio files to me, I sort of work on uh, the entire presentation, the actual animation that goes into the video, as well as setting up the stream. So you should include the time. I would say. Between me and Alex, we spent well over between five and seven full days on it. This is, of oh, course, yeah. outside of our actual job. So this is what we do in the evening, <laughs> yeah. which is why it takes so long for us to make a video. I would love to have a weekly weekly upload. It's just not something we, we have the bandwidth for right now. Because on average, let's say we, we can spend one, maybe an hour and a half on, on a video each each evening. Um, like try and count that up until you get to 80 and then you need between 80 and 120 hours to get a video out no matter what it is 
Um, so that's that's kind of the reason why we're why we are slow. But I would much rather have sort of the high quality content we have right now yeah. than do faster stuff and just like do it really roughly. Uh, Body counter asks, how large is the Kaiser Cat crew and where do you all hail from? So, how many of us are there? How many um, of us are there? The thing is, uh, the crew's been expanding a few times. I'm actually, I'm actually, I, at this point, I have to go into my my own Discord. Uh, no, I'm full. I'm full screen with you. I cannot go into my Discord. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no. Okay. So online, I can see that there's a. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, not everyone's online as well. Uh, let me quickly check. It's probably about. 10 of us yeah, I want to say it's, it's, it's going to be between 8 and 15 people it depends on who you're counting because there's about yeah. 2 or 3 crew members that we have not introduced yet uh, who will yes. be joining us soon some people that will just be in the back and working like for example a new animator is joining us called Carles and he will assist with uh, making new World of Kajwak videos and we've got we've got people from all over we've got Eastern Seaboard US we've got Western US uh, don't think we have anyone in Canada then Spain you're from uh, you're from UK, of course. I'm from yes, Belgium. I'm the... uh, yep. We've got quite a few team members from Sweden, uh, strangely enough. Uh, that's Nicolas, who is now doing the um, the illustrations for World of Guys Drive China, and uh -huh. uh, he's working together with Carles, and he they will be doing sort of s separate series of videos in the World of Guys Drive genre. Uh, how far along is the KR animated series and what are the plans for it? Owen Bilo, Owen Bilo, if you are still in the stream, actually I'm just going to I'm just going to show it to you how far along it is. Oh. Now our um, you're gonna to have to give me a second while I actually look for the animation composed. Well, while you while you find that I'll I'll read one of the other questions because the next uh, the next question yeah, this uh, might take is, my is, darling is the next question is something that I thought would be uh, just fun winter. to talk about because it brings us into a subgenre of things that we mm -hmm. enjoy. It says any chance of a Kaiserreich board game or a Kaiserreich video game? I mean, if if at the end of the day everything that we uh, or, or like for example the artwork you did ended up becoming mm. some like a, a role playing games guidebook like can you imagine a, a role playing game set in the Kaiserreich universe I think that yeah would... that's, that's kind of the like a tabletop game uh, yeah. something the, one of the reasons we're, we're talking about tabletop is because, because Commissar Roach is uh, he's a dungeon master I'm a dungeon master yes. as well we play a lot of D&D &D as well between the crew yeah um, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a player in Commissar Roach's D and D game. I I DM a Call of Cthulhu game. Uh, I'm hoping to DM some D and D soon with some friends. Like uh, I'm I'm big on tabletop. You're yeah. big on tabletop. We'd we'd love that. So we're big on tabletop. So maybe we'll do something. But the the conversation I'm having right now is I feel that um, it's very difficult to do tabletop RPG that is not in a D and D in a high fantasy setting. Why? Because the sort of yeah. the option the 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 amount of scenarios you can have in a fantasy setting is really, really crazy because j anything goes essentially. If, I mean, if, if it's magic, you, as a DM, you do have the you have the tools and the leverage to say, okay, the door's talking to you now because of course the door's talking. That doesn't work in a realistic setting. So we're, I think he's a uh, commissar. He's working on a scenario with the uh, shell shock rule set. Yes. Yeah. Let's see if like we're we're gonna try that out if he if he finishes it and then um, release it for free. If people want to play it's yeah. definitely something something i think that would be interesting anyway and th there would be miniatures available for that as well because there's things for example uh there's the tabletop game a very british civil war and i've recently picked up miniatures for that and that for a uh, british civil war yeah 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 so it's like uh for a thing so i've got like a little guy here with a brody oh, no, hat and cool. a tommy gun it's like uh <laughs> it's, it's like you, we, we could definitely have a go at that. I'd love to give yeah. a go. Uh, well, a go. one of the things we're, uh, we're, we're building up to right now is uh, having a few Patreon exclusive streams, just smaller streams between yeah. because we just surpassed the uh, 30 Patreon mark, meaning $100 a month. So thanks thanks to everyone supporting. And um, that's probably the test bed because that's going to be a smaller stream with less people watching uh, where we sort of try out this, this stuff and see if it works. Anyway, uh, for the people asking about pianists, Owen Bilo, uh, this is where Pianist is at right now. Uh, this is a this is temporary VO that's being done by uh, by Alex himself, but we are still looking oh, for a cast. Oh goodness, I forgot yeah. that idea. Yeah, this that. is this is still this is this is still your original read. Um, obviously, it's very rough, not in animation style because this is about the quality of animation you'll have because it'll be 
much more about having multiple sequences of very simple animatic because that's all we can do in terms of time right now. Yeah, I'll just I let it a, play. I did a guide voice for this. I My darling yeah. Isabella. <laughs> it's been three winters since I last saw your face. This is sort of a mood test Each one uh, we're working with. I'm trying to find an emotional tone. Than the last. We were received in Berlin as heroes. Famous German artists expelled by a foreign and oppressive power on the verge of collapse. So this is about all we have right now. I've got. This is one of the things that um, also keeps keeps getting pushed back fairly fairly often because of the world of guys back and the work that goes into it. And now this new show, it's definitely gonna happen. Uh, I originally had hoped to premiere it at PDXCon. Uh, looking at, we'll meet each other there, of course, Alex. Um, yes, I'm going. Yeah. We, we're only, I think, three or four weeks out, so I, that's not something we're gonna make. So it's probably gonna be in the in the like Q4 beginning of 2020. It's definitely something we've been dragging our feet on because it's it's a lot of work. It's like literally the most amount of work we can do on a show, which is doing an animatic style uh, storytelling. Yes. But uh, we're we're excited about that. That's definitely something that's coming. Um, is there any CD merch with all the audio content that is coming out? Okay, Gnall asks. Um, I don't remember if is it was was that something we talked about with the with the. In terms of uh, having physical merch of the audio, like the the audio specifically, uh, we haven't we haven't talked about that yet. Um, because the way I've always seen it is we just put it out for free. We put it on sh on uh, on. Um, I want to put it on YouTube. I want to put it on Spotify when we get like, there's a bit of licensing we need to do because we only have a contract to use the music on YouTube right now. Um, what's also possible is of course, the reason um, we're doing all this is because we're building, we're collecting artwork and building up towards, we want to go to Kickstarter and do a world of guys like art book. And that's one of the things I would love to have is like a certain tier then would be like a miniature and an L a pressed LP of all the music we've made and the radio shows that that's about when we'll start thinking about that. I, it's not something I will put on the store immediately because it's just always going to be free on YouTube as well. It would mostly yeah. be something very unique, very exclusive. That's nice to have if you are a Kickstarter backer at whatever tier that is when we do that. Yeah. Um, will the CSA and others be featured next season? Homero Garza Jr. Well, we've already said any timeline is possible. Mm -hmm. um, I well, do I hmm. so like I've, I like we've already mentioned the first five episodes mm -hmm. are going to be focused on Faircrest so naturally they're going to have uh, a more English centric but I, I say that with loose terms um, viewpoint but uh, well, then it, wait and see wait and see yeah uh, I'm just going to add a few questions that I'm getting from live chat. By the way, you guys, uh, we oh, yeah. might not get get to all the questions because I want to kind of wrap up in, let's say, 10 minutes uh, because we're, we're already running for, I think, past an hour and a half. But um, we'll add a few more questions and then wrap it up. Will yep. there be art for Ukraine, Romania, Russia, and other nations or in the far future? Uh, Loss on Lotion, I assume this is a question for me. So mm -hmm. the World of Kaiserreichs we have planned right now uh, in this order are uh, World of Kaiserreich New England, Dominion of Canada, it might be Hawaii or Hawaii, Hawaii might come later. Then uh, it's going to be China and somewhere in between China, there will be a few European countries. So Russia still isn't very high on the list, but I would love to have a Russia team the way we had a United States team. Um, I would love to do something like that in the in the next year where we do like Kaiserreich all the Russias because that like uh, not a lot of people here know this but the original idea for Kaiserreich came from a Hearts of Iron 2 mod uh, by a modder called Sarmata and he was actually the originator of the Kaiserreich idea because he had made a mod uh, whereas, but it was essentially a mod for Russia alone but the concept was Germany had won World War 1 and Russia, the Breslitovs really went through and that was actually the basis of the lore of what now is uh, the Savinkov, uh, the Russian state, Kolchak. All that stuff was in there. But the rest of the world wasn't really fleshed out, but people took that and made Kaiserreich out of it. So I think it would be really cool to return to Russia in that way, in a big way, with like all the Russias, the original sort of start uh, epicenter of Kaiserreich. So not soon, I would say. It, it just takes time, guys. We need to be patient when we do this. Um, 
we want to do it right. So we also we're, we're looking for more artists so we can expand that as well. Uh, will some content about France be a thing? Uh, okay, now, yeah. Bro, at some point, obviously, uh, we're going to touch on France. It's great power in the country, so we'll just pass. Is this story? Is this story a uh, Kajlach timeline? version of the Battle of Taranto, or even just a bit related, where Swordfish destroyed the Italian fleet in our timeline. Battle Pick 101. Okay, so I, I know what this is about. Yeah, so it's about, about the battle, battle sequence, yeah. So that, that's actually uh, based on a story from the Battle of Malta, um, and the I think in the I think in this version he's called the Falcon of the Azores, I think, yeah. and it's actually, it was uh, the Eagle of Malta, I think there was a guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not the same pilot. The Kestrel but, uh, of the Azores, you call them. Oh, yeah, oh, Kestrel of the Azores, yeah. Azores, he might have been the Falcon of the... Of the of Malta. I'm going to have to look that yeah. up. But yeah, it's basically based on the uh, actual Battle of Malta. All right. Well, so you're, you're essentially taking, uh, taking. I didn't even know that you're taking real life battles and sort of transposing that into whatever timeline we're working on right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lord Commissar, for the uh, super chat. Um, he's he's come in with the super chat. When will you do some content about Poland? We just uploaded two flags to the web shop. That's all we have for now. Uh, do you yeah. have anything planned, Alex, on your shows? Um, I mean, the, the great thing about uh, these radio shows is that. Even though they're set in one country, we can talk about a lot of other countries. For example, in this first episode, I managed to talk about the USA, mm. uh, Germany, um, and and we get... So, I mean, because we haven't got the scripts yet past episode one and two, there's nothing so far about Poland, but there's definitely room where they could be. Mm. Uh, I'd love to put some bits about uh, Poland in there because I really like the lore on Poland in... Um, in the Kaiserite universe, how mm. uh, with the with the different um, succession to the Kingdom of Poland, yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be nice. Yeah, it's definitely um, that's again one uh, one comes back to the question of uh, what order do we do things in? Like every country is going to have a world of Kaiserite at some point, um, <laughs> but it's just going like that's always been our mission: sort of complete the world of Kaiserite series and whatever content we can do, whatever new shows we can start up, great. But I sort of want there to be a video on every single country in Kaiserreich. Oh, yeah. Continuing. And then you can just use it as a fact hub and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Continuing. Uh, so at this point, I'm coming into the questions of the live chat because I've reached the end of your document. Yep. So we'll do a few of these and then we'll wrap it up. Let's say we do yep, about no seven more minutes. That's going to be uh, 23, 45 uh, in your timeline. That's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fine. It's getting fine. pretty late in Belgium where it's, uh, it's quarter to one right now. All right. I could go for another like five hours. Yeah, just... I mean, yeah, of course we could we could keep going, but I do have to work tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Um, it, no jumpers asks, is there? Oh no, wait. Yeah, is there going to be a second American Civil War radio content in the future? Uh, okay. So um, again, it'll be it won't be the first season, but uh, I've definitely myself got some ideas in season two and i i can't wait to uh head on to season two well even though i can't wait to finish season one as well but uh yeah i'd say stick around for season two uh is what the only thing i'll say on that one covering um following up on that question homero garza jr asks alex will you do a timeline where the combined syndicates of america won the second american civil war in the second season of kaiserreich radio People keep asking about the uh, American Civil War. They're clearly enjoying the World of Kaiserreich content on the American Civil War. Yeah, yeah. Well, War. it's it's a big uh, it's it's a big feature of Kaiserreich. Like it's a very dramatic thing to have the Second American Civil yeah. War in there. I, I'd say my favorite section of Kaiserreich is the American Civil War. I've, I've played the hell out of that. So, uh, I you can expect that the American Civil War will will be covered. It'll be covered. Yeah, I'll get there at some point. Um, at some point. There's a question for me uh, by Je Suis. He <laughs> asks, Vincent, have you ever made portraits for Kaiserreich? I have not uh, made portraits for Kaiserreich because I'm obviously not the only artist that works on Kaiserreich as well. There's a fairly large art team. Uh, there's a bunch of guys making portraits right now. They're doing great work. Um, I just don't do, um, even when I was still on the Kaiserreich team, which at this point I'm a semi-active dev because I'm sending all the Kaiserreich cinema stuff we make their way. Yeah. We're also doing the ref share. Um, what I did was essentially paint loading screens, and then that's when we started getting into a. Hey, what if we animate these, put some put some audio on it? That became World of Kaiserreich. That became Kaiserreich Cinema, essentially. 
there's also a bunch of questions here uh, in sort of all coalescing around the idea of like, would we ever do a live action uh, Kaiser Reich? Would we ever do live action Kaiser Reich? Like, Alex, you're an actor, like you, you tell me. Yep. Um, I would love to, but uh, that would be something that would, uh, again, have to be down the line. Uh, I would love to get some live action Kaiser Reich stuff done. I definitely know teams that could put it together, but again, that would be funding and support for that. So, yeah. uh, hey, if you want to, if you guys really, really want that, we'll we could kickstart it or something and yeah i mean um was it was it with you that i was talking to um that we were talking to a bunch of uh, british reenactment groups in the south of england like near your area uh i think you've mentioned it to me yeah uh for sure we've we've been talking to uh and reenactment groups both in uh, england and in the north of flanders and north of france which is sort of the region between the two of us which is which we yeah. easily accessible by us by train yeah. um Obviously, there's there's a large layer of complexity in there, uh, and it's not something that's gonna be right now. Right now, I'm, oh, good. I'm what I love to do is first have sort of better quality studio, so try out live action World of Kaiserreich, where it's simply like instead of a, an illustration, it would be people in costume with a camera rotating around them, in a slow motion sort of like um, it's like the intro to true detective which is a sort of double exposure i'm going to run it on my uh, on my screen for you guys if i find the video because that doesn't require acting uh and it's sort of it's, it's a little more about where we are strong so i'm running a video for you guys right now uh that sort of shows what i want to try with world of kaiser uh, in a sort of live action variation where it's like double exposure with an overlay of projector footage of soldiers. Impius Rex asks, will future radio shows be Royalist Radio or will you do other faction radios like a Union of Britain version or an American Union State version? So, um, I, can, I, I can answer that. Um, so, basically, uh, Royalist Radio for now will be the only one on royalist radio we will go to a completely different timeline next time mm -hmm. uh with the same character but in a completely different world uh i will quickly announce the project title um for the for the next episode the next episode is entitled Let's see um, if i can uh, find your images uh, on oh yeah oh, wait i can't time. pull up my discord because you're full screen on <laughs> uh i can quickly drop the image on the dock i guess yeah if you can uh, uh hold on i will i will Actually, I'll, uh, if I send you, a, I'll drop, I'll drop you a link to the image on the dock. Uh, there you I'm are. Seeing you as an editor. Are you putting it at the bottom or at the top? It's at the at the bottom. Uh, it's gone down a page. Oh no, there's a there's yeah. an empty page and then the thing. Yeah, there I see. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the project the Milius. Milius. Uh, Milius. So um, there's a hint to what that one might be right there. Um. And all of the projects have other code names, which I will slowly leak out. Uh, as the projects get underway, so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. To that. I hope that I hope that answers your question. Let's see what we have. All right, um, what I would do, Alex, is I would call it a night. I think uh, we've had a we have a great show. We still have 150 people watching for the Q and A. We had 500 people in the beginning, 300 people making making it all the way through the radio show. I'm super happy about those numbers. Uh, guys, don't don't forget. As we take you out, I am going to give you all the link one more time. The Royalist Radio, the first season. It's already up at 600 views, and I'm <laughs> looking forward to see. So don't forget to share that link across your different channels. We'll also post an announcement on our Discord. You guys are always welcome on our Discord. Yeah. That's going to be all for today, and uh, we will see Alex again when the next episode of Guys Like Radio probably won't be very soon because they're still uh, working a lot on the script. But um, I'm definitely looking forward to that, Alex. Yeah, no worries. I, I can't wait for it too. So uh, thank you, everybody who came to watch that. Thank you for everyone who's stuck around all the way to the end here as well. And thank you for everyone who's um, submitted questions. Had some really great questions, and it's a pleasure being here. Yeah. Um, we are uh, going to cut the stream out there. We have uh, a full Patreon read available at the end of the um, the actual video, the uh, like the, the actual radio video, where we sort of thank all our patrons. I just want to say generally, uh, thanks to everyone who's been supporting the channel. Thanks to all the new patrons that have joined. We've surpassed one hundred dollars. 
Uh, we've surpassed, I think, 1,500 orders on the web shop, which has also been great for us. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, we hope to see you guys again for the next video as we uh, switch back to World of Geyserwag as we talk about New England. That's going to be it. Uh, are we giving them the salute, Alex? Oh, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Uh... Right. See you later, guys.